You know, I think it's just one of, no, you can't tease anything in this show. <laughs> hi, Brooklyn, how are you? Hi, hi, I'm good, thank you. Good, um, congratulations on this show. This, this is like such a wild ride. When you first got maybe this audition or script, were you like hooked immediately? Like, were you like, I need to be on this show? Well, I have to be honest. I heard about, I knew about this script um, way before because I know the creator, Burt V. Royal. And he was like, Brooklyn, I have this character. I would, would love for you to play her. Can you read the script? I read it and he's like, do you like it? I was like, um, do I like it? <laughs> That's an understatement because, you know, like very rarely do you see a script that inter, you know, like interweaves like the different years, these different characters and just the whole setup and the premise also being in the mid nineties, like it just all worked and it worked really well. Um, and so it's fun to see, be on this side of it now and seeing the response from everybody. It's been really exciting. I mean, that must be cool to have a part sort of pretty much written for you. I feel like that could be either like, oh, you think I can play this type of character in a good way? Or like, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool, well, right? well, you know, the one thing that, you know, um, about Angela, who I play on Cruel Summer, is, you know, she's very strong. She's warm. She's kind of the one person who stays pretty consistent um, in just the way that she is. In, in all of the dynamics and the roller coaster ride that happens uh, in in this, the first season. So um, it was just fun to play somebody who's who knows their mind, who knows who they are and is not afraid to just be themselves. And what was it like getting to take a trip back to the 90s? Because I feel like that's one of the main things that I love about this show. Like in the first episode, there was a mention of like the movie Untamed Heart, which is something I loved as a kid that I feel like doesn't ever get referenced. And right all of the music and obviously growing up in the 90s, but now you get to go back kind of as an adult, which is a yeah. different kind of experience. So what was it like? No, it was really, I mean, it was, there was a lot of nostalgia happening for sure. And I think more so than anything, just hearing the music and the musical references, there's nothing like music to transport you somewhere. And so I immediately went into like, my middle school zone and, and and the fashion and and so it was a lot of fun to kind of recreate that and bring that to life and to also like talk about it with some of the other cast members like Kiara who's like 18 and like was not nowhere near <laughs> born at that point so it was fun to be able to kind of experience it again through their eyes and to just relive some of those fun memories and like cassette tapes and all of that kind of stuff that's kind of wild that she wasn't even born in the no. 90s at all <laughs> Crazy. I love, and most of your scenes are with Kiara and then also Michael. What is it like watching her transformation? Because coming up in, in the episode this week, we finally get to see you in you know, 1994, but mainly you're in 1995. So what's right. it kind of like seeing how these girls are transforming their, their roles from each year? Well, first of all, I can't say enough good things about my cast. Kiara, um, is incredible, like undeniably talented, completely gifted uh, and brought so much enthusiasm to the experience. And she had a lot of work to do and she always came completely there and present. So it was real, it was very easy to work alongside her and, and Michael too, because he's a pro, you know? And so, um, so it was just, it to, to watch the transformation and it wasn't obviously it's, you know, emotional transformation and arcs and stuff, but just the physical, like the different hairstyles and all that stuff. Like we would joke, you know, like, oh, who are you today? Are you are you Beaver today? <laughs> you know, with the short hair, and like the long hair, and different things. So it, we we had fun with it. But Kiara is is so incredibly talented, and it was so fun to be able to go on this journey with her. And I love this episode because you really we finally get more of Angela, but also just seeing how. She has such a good heart. And when nobody's kind of on, you know, Jeanette's side, she's there, whether, I mean, do you know whether, I mean, it's hard to say. Like, well, this is the thing. I think from Angela's perspective, um, the truth almost doesn't matter. And I think it's for her, it's that I think she relates to, 
to being a teenage girl, you know, and understanding that everybody makes mistakes and that nobody is 100% perfect and that probably there's truth on both sides to a certain degree. And so, yes, you know, I think she is team Turner because she is, you know, um, in a burgeoning relationship with Greg and, 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 but I think what she ultimately wants to connect to is the humanity um, um, in, in Jeanette and to have her understand like you are a, a young human being trying to figure it out and that's okay. And we all are going through that at different levels and we all need support, you know, and we're not going to get it right a hundred percent of the time. So, you know, it, it, it was really fun to be able to kind of, watch that relationship um, progress and to, to be able to kind of delve into that. And I love that we have a character like Angela, because like you said, you know, everybody just, you know, with the surface level stuff, everybody just automatically makes that kind of, you know, judgment, but she's really trying to get down to the core of, you know, who Jeanette is and how she's feeling, but also I feel like we all as a society just need to see a character like that because we're so quick to judge and we're, you know, so quick to put blame on somebody without fully knowing. Experience. Exactly. And I think that's one of the great things about this show is that um, you're seeing it played out, right? You're seeing it played out in a very kind of concise way. And, but all of those themes are relevant today, even more so that people think everything is so black and white and are so quick to judge and say, oh, well, that person did that. So that must mean that they're all bad. Or, you know, that person, they didn't do anything and they were victimized. So that must mean that they're all good, you know? Um, and I think that life is way more gray. People have the whole spectrum in, you know, we're, we're all a little bit, have a little bit bad. We all have some good, you know, it's not just all one or the other. And I think um, that was one of the big things for me that, that made this show so interesting. And, and I think, you know, other than just being entertaining, really kind of give some kind of uh, awareness and commentary on like what is going on in this world and, and how we do things. And it's a pretty heavy show, but there is the karaoke moment in this week's episode that just like, I feel like brought a whole nother level to the show. What was it like to film that? Was it fun? Did you get the you know, have any input into the song and what is your go-to karaoke song? Okay, um, so the karaoke scene, there was like a lot of build up. Okay, like what song are we gonna sing? And it's like, oh, we're gonna sing this one or that song. Um, and so finally when it was chosen, Kiara and I go, oh, wow. All right, like we gotta really practice this one. <laughs> so there was a little bit of nervousness regarding, you know, singing the song, but it was so fun. I mean, I think it's one of the, Kiara has a, a fantastic voice and loves musical theater. And so it was fun for us to, to collaborate on that and, and work work on that together. Um, you know, my, my go-to karaoke, uh, usually it's like an Adele song, like Rolling in the Deep or something like that. Usually I just kind of wail and just go for it. I feel like it. that's even tougher than what you were saying. Maybe, I don't know. I think I just you know it so it. well now. It's just kind of like, all right, let's just go for it. You gotta definitely warm up, but you know. <laughs> um, and last thing before I let you go, what's one thing you can maybe tease about Angela's art? Cause we still have like five episodes left. I feel like everybody on the show sort of has a secret can you tease anything about what we're going to see with her? You know, I think it's just one of, no, you can't tease anything in this <laughs> show. I mean, literally you can't. And I think that's one of the hard things about it because you can't, everything matters. And so I would just be like, you know, pay attention. <laughs> I feel like there's like, you little, pay attention, you know, clues just go throughout off for the their whole life. Show. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's one of the things with that's going to be really cool about this show is that once we get to the final episode, everybody's going to go back and start from the beginning and watch again because the, all the little clues that are left along the way um, are going to start to make even more sense at that point. I love it. Those are my favorite yeah. types of shows. It's like watching a Marvel movie. You're like, what's going on? Yeah, exactly. You know, I've got so many text messages like, can you tell me? Can you give me? I'm like, no, I, I'm sorry. I just, I can't. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much and congratulations on the show. I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lisa. Have a good one. You too.